Because we cannot go out and put a thermometer into a star, they're too far away for, for the simplest reason, we need to study their light. And this brief overview, it will help you with this week's longer lectures by the professor uh, to talk about how we know what the temperatures of the stars are. First of all, there is um, a, a bit of background here, and that uh, goes to an idea uh, that is known as black body radiation. The term black body is a scientific term, and a black body is an object, a theoretical object, uh, that reflects no light. Uh, and you might think, though, that no reflection means that it would be white. If something does not reflect any color, it does not reflect red, it does not reflect blue, uh, it does not reflect any color, it absorbs all colors, all wavelengths of light, red, orange, yellow, ultraviolet, infrared. Nothing is reflected from it. It is all absorbed, and so it appears to be black to us. It's a black body. Uh, and so this is a theoretical object. If a black body gets heated, uh, it acts in a particular way. The best, our best um, way that we can produce black body radiation is uh, by taking an object, in this case this is a, a cube, um, and heating that cube. It so happens that that cube has a very small opening in it through which light can pass. When you when, when their thing is not heated and you look into the black and you look into the chamber, uh, it's black in there. So as the uh, as the chamber gets heated, as the cube gets heated, uh, energy will come out through this opening, and then we can study it. And it turns out that that black bodies give off radiation in particular ways. So this theoretical object that really does not, but we can explain mathematically, not for us, we'll explain it in just in words. It's a perfect object that reflects no light and when heated, it acts in a particular way. We are going to use not the Fahrenheit scale or not the Celsius scale, but the Kelvin scale the absolute uh, temperature scale. Zero degrees is the theoretic, theoretical coldest uh, temperature there is. And there's 273 degrees between the Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale. For practical purposes for you and me, uh, whenever you have a Kelvin scale, you can just about double that number and that'll give you Fahrenheit. So something that is 6,000 degrees Kelvin is approximately 12,000, 11 to 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit. A 12,000 degree Kelvin object is in the 20 to 22,000 degree Fahrenheit range. So when we heat that black body up to very, very high temperatures in the thousands of degrees, whether it's measured on the Kelvin scale or it's measured on the, on the Fahrenheit scale, it's pretty hot. These objects emit light in distinct ways. The, the way that it gets is, is according to these graphs. An object that is 12,000 degrees will emit light in this kind of graph distribution. So if we measure the color, the wavelength, and how much light we get, we can graph that. And so the 12,000 degree black body curve looks like this. The 6,000 Kelvin black body curve looks like the middle one. And the 3,000 Kelvin black body curve looks like this. So theoretically, we know the temperature by measuring how light this each, it, we can measure um, at that temperature and then graph it. So we end up with the black body curves. Notice that we have superimposed the visible light uh, spectrum here. Notice that all of these objects emit light in the visible part of the spectrum, whether it's 3,000 Kelvin, 
6,000 Kelvin or 12,000 Kelvin. So these are visible to us. We can see them. And uh, we are pretty certain that stars act black bodies. The best approximation, the best, um, the, the best description we can say that a star acts like a hot black body. The way that we can tell the temperature of a star, there's, there's two ways, but the simplest way is by looking at where the peak is. The peak, the, the maximum color, the maximum color here tells us the temperature. There is a base principle of black bodies, black body objects. It's called Wien's Law. It's spelled with a W. Uh, he was a German. So Wien's Law is quite simple, and that is if we take the maximum color, in, uh, in science we use the Greek letter lambda, lambda to represent the wavelength, the color, primary color. We would see this as the primary color. Times the temperature of the object is a constant. Well, quite simply, that means that the maximum wavelength is some constant divided by the temperature. So if we can see the primary color, which we really do, notice that the primary color of the 6,000 degree Kelvin, uh, 6,000 Kelvin object is in the yellow part of the spectrum. So this is going to be an object that is primarily yellow to us. This 5,000 Kelvin object, its lambda max, is in the red part of the spectrum. So this object will look red to us. It'll look red. So notice that the higher the temperature, the shorter the wavelength. That's really the, uh, the, the shorter the wavelength of the, of the primary color of the, of the black body, in this case, the star. So by looking at the color of a star, we can really estimate its temperature. Now, we end up with some problems when we start to get in part of the spectrum that you and I cannot see visually, and that's over here in the infrared. Uh, so this object that is uh, 4,000 degrees, infra means beyond, it's beyond red. And the object there that is in the 4,000 degree Kelvin, notice that its maximum, its primary color it emits, it's out there in the infrared. We would see this object as red. Notice this object, these we would see as red to our eyes. But with an infrared telescope, we would notice that we could measure that its, its, its maximum uh, color, its primary color, is out there in the infrared. In the same way for this 3,000 degree Kelvin object, and notice that it's all in the red part of the spectrum too. So we would see these objects as reddish to our eyes. We don't see anything that's as red as the color I'm using here. It's more reddish orange. Uh, colors uh, in the stars are very, very uh, subtle, uh, unless you get a, um, a, a unless um, you get something that's pretty bright, like the sun. That's primarily in that yellow, uh, yellowish white, uh, combining these colors up here, uh, get a yellow white look at our sun, yellow white green color. So we can tell the temperature of a star by looking at its, at its primary color. So for a star cluster like the Pleiades, we can tell that these stars are incredibly hot because they're blue. Their primary color is blue. And so these stars are uh, way up there in uh, the temperatures that are higher than our sun. So the hotter the object, the bluer it will show up. If we go back one uh, picture here, notice we have a star here. At, we have an, a black body that could be a star here at 12,000 degrees. Its primary color is over in the ultraviolet but we would see this star somewhat um, looking blue to us is what we would see as the primary color of that object, very similar to these, uh, these Pleiades stars that are the um, 20,000 Fahrenheit range. They're in that 12,000 degree Kelvin. Just as a side note, I want to point out something to hear, you here that you've probably seen before, but actually uh, these little 
lines that are around the stars. What these little lines are, are actually the part of the telescope that holds the secondary mirror. This is a collecting telescope that made this picture. And whenever you see these things that look like, uh, these are called spikes, and the term for them is diffraction spike. These are really um, part of the telescope uh, that are, that's illuminated by the stars over a very long time exposure, and they show up in the picture. This is, uh, this is part of the telescope that shows up from the, uh, from the light that is uh, collected by the telescope in a long time exposure. So these stars are very, very blue. They're very hot. And that an estimation of, uh, we can estimate uh, without precise measurements, uh, the temperatures of the objects by looking at their primary color. That is a very significant feature. Veen's law tells us that simply in words is the object, the bluer the color. The redder the object, I'm sorry, the blue, blue objects are hot, hotter than red objects. And that's kind of contrary to our normal thinking that objects that look red are hot. We typically are taught in art class that red is a hot color. Actually, really hot, they're blue, and when they're not so hot, they're reddish. And so, and we see the same thing in the stars. One final piece here is that uh, as you look at these graphs, um, you can notice that this one is very, very low. The, the 3,000, uh, this one, I mean the 3,000 one, is a very, very low graph. It doesn't go up very high. Whereas the graph goes up really, really high and covers lots of area, covers lots of space. There's one more principle here that is called the Stefan Boltzmann principle. And if we go, in this case, by doubling the temperature from 3,000 to 6,000, then from 6,000 to 12,000, doubling the temperature, the amount of energy that the object gives off is much greater. And the Stefan Boltzmann principle, we can somewhat see it here. If we could measure how much energy is coming out of, uh, of each of these black bodies, we would see that the amount of energy is, that is released by a black body, or in case this uh, star, um, is, uh, depends upon the fourth power of its temperature. So if we go from a 3,000 degree Kelvin black body star to a 6,000 Kelvin star, we double the temperature. So it means that the 6,000 degree object is giving off 16 times more energy. That means two times two times two times two. two. We're doubling the temperature to the fourth power. So that 16, uh, that 6,000 degree object is giving off twice as much, en or 16 times as much energy as a temperature that's half its object that's half its temperature. And the same thing then occurs as we go up to the 12,000. This object. It, this black body is giving off 16 times more energy than the um, 6,000 degrees. And um, 3,000 to 12,000, that's 16 times 16, uh, that's 256. So the 12,000 degree Kelvin object is giving off 256 times more energy than the 3,000 degree object is. So, uh, the Stefan Boltzmann tells us the hotter the object, the more energy it releases. Wien's Law, black bodies, Stefan Boltzmann principle. These are very important as you watch the longer videos uh, and, and listen to the professor as he talks about energy, black bodies, and temperatures. So, the hotter the object, the bluer it is, and the more energy it releases.